Yes, and uh, before we proceed to the next <laughs> subject of discussion, let's first of all allow Paul to weigh in his sentiments. And my question was then, what is left of the electorate, who again has the ultimate right to decide whether they're going to put this leader on board or not, in as much as there's always that stock of systems and, you know, sometimes uh, some of these people read their way in and all that. I, at least at some point in time, the electorate mm. should have their voices heard. Mm, I think that the reason why, if you look at uh, the nine-point agenda, the discussion is about electoral justice. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of these things we are talking about, uh, the deep state, uh, I, I heard uh, the former vice president, Carlos Musioka, talking about the deep state. Uh, that's why we have to reach a point where are we able to get the right result, free, fair, credible, verifiable election mm -hmm. come 2022, because that has been the main issue in, 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 any, in every electioneering period. period yeah. And that's the reason uh, some of us really champion that Apart from all the other shenanigans, are we able to have a, a impartial uh, electoral uh, system? Uh, Kenyans, uh, it's not the first time. The deep state uh, was defeated in 202 when their candidate was Uru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. And uh, against the, it was against the will of the people. People stood firm and voted for Mwai Kibaki. Uh, the point that where we have reached as Kenyans is just about uh, believing in what is right, stopping being so much resilient and then be in the street and champion for the rights of all of us. Because as things go, I pray, because without, uh, without a handshake, this country could have collapsed. Mm. Imagining the economic crisis that we have now and then the political temperature being high, mm. we could not be having a nation today. So it's high time now we as Kenyans stand up and uh, champion for what's right for all of us. Mm. And looking at what he was just saying here, mm, there are some of these economic uh, problems that we have just allowed ourselves. Uh, if you go to here in Kajiado, you find a well built, uh, constructed or uh, with a less than two million shillings and serving around 100 households. Uh, you find in uh, Aurora and Kimorer, they had uh, put 63 billion for a, a, re a, a region which is uh, less populated, more less than two million people. 63 billion in Kajiado, a well constructed 2 million serving over 100 people. So 63 billion, if they just decided now to put wells, how much, how, if you look at the cost effect and everything. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, living in a country where the, we are uh, not resource, resource conservative concerned mm -hmm. in such a way that uh, Kenyans are dying because of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, and just like you, you, you put it, the leadership and governance, that's what helps this country. And constitution without constitutionalism is not a constitution. Mm. Yes. All right. Well, uh, sort of a note to or a point to note. But then you say that the political temperatures mm. sort of cooled down after the handshake. Uh, sort of cooled down, I think, would be the word because then we still have the political temperatures running across the country pretty mm. much high. Mm. Uh, why I'm saying this is because. For the longest of time, there have been those calls to Kenyan leaders, most of the leaders, of course, within the Jubilee Party, ODM, and all these other parties, mm -hmm. to sort of just try and put aside 2022 talk or 2022 politics a talk and concentrate on the question of development. While we all agree that politicians are paid to politic, I think mm -hmm. this has gone to a level that probably has been, you know, sort of a pollutant in a way uh, for the people of Kenya. Maybe that's the reason why we've not had uh, things moving on pretty well as expected. And so. There's been that battle on who's going to succeed President Uhuru Kenyatta, the talks on over referendum. And year in, year out, 2019 mm. has been characterized by matters of politics. But amid all this politics or politicking, we have not failed to have our fair share of tough times as a people of Kenya. Mm. That's the reason why today we're having this conversation. And even the biggest reason why most of the Kenyans will tell you they fear for tomorrow. They do not know what tomorrow holds for them, but then they still hold on to hope what doctor says. So... We take a look at some of the tough times because it's on these that you review and sit down on ground and say that moving forward, I think this is the direction. I mean, with the good times that you can celebrate, you can always celebrate and celebrate the victory. Put it aside, focus on addressing the issue. So let's take a look at some of the tragedies that sort of uh, met us as a people of Kenya in 2019. And we look at how far we are in regards to addressing such in the event that they get to occur again. We're not trying to prophesy doom, but you know, you never know. Anything will always happen. I mean, things are bound to happen. So how ready you are is what will determine how safe you will be. Let's take a look at that.